In this making of, I will talk a little bit about the technical approach of the short film growth. The film originated in the sensation of passing by the house where you grew up and created your childhood and being overcome with a sudden flash of memories and emotions of everything, good and bad, that happened in that place. To visualize this flash, I wanted to create a film that compressed an entire childhood, 18 years, into a single seamless shot, as if it still exists somewhere detached from time. We started with our cast, the parents first and then the two children. We cast four different ages for the older brother and four for the younger brother. To make a seamless camera motion, we worked with a motion control system called Panther which is a programmable camera system that can endlessly repeat the same motion. We tested the camera system and recorded some keyframes to create a simple motion. On the left you see the camera system on the tracks and the girl sitting in a chair. She just comes into frame on the right, where we combined multiple takes of her appearing in different places. Because the camera made the same motion every single take, we were able to seamlessly overlap and stitch the different shots together. This allowed us to follow the girl to her new position, and meanwhile review her dancing in the background. We measured and rebuilt the system in a 3D program and gave it the same animatable variables for track, rotate, lift, tilt and pan. Next was our location. We found a real house on a house buying website. We picked this house because the interior worked well for the film. It had enough space for our props and spare rooms for things like wardrobe and makeup. We measured the living room and kitchen precisely, rebuilt it in 3D and put our digital motion control camera in there. We also built some of the garden and street exterior to help plan our compositions. The top view in the lower right gives a sense of the scale of the 3D set. We added posable 3D versions of our actors and gave them unique colors and by that point we were able to start planning the entire film. In the top here is a shot from the digital camera in our 3D scene. The camera is animated and moving through the room. The lower left is a fly on the wall perspective of the same scene and the lower right shows a top view of how the camera system moved through the room on the tracks. This gave the crew an idea of what would be visible in frame at any point in the film and it helped us plan our shoot. When we locked our digital camera motion we had a set of curves which we then converted into a data sheet that we used to program our real camera on set. By that point the art team took over the house. They added wooden walls to make the house appear smaller for the beginning of the film. They placed an old kitchen in front of the real modern one and even built fake walls to create the illusion of the house being expanded during the film. They also added thin walls on top of the real walls to cover the organic textures for the end scenes. Soon after, every corner of the house was filled with props from the 70s, 80s and 90s, from the garage all the way to the bathroom. There was an incredible amount of detail. To give you two examples, this is a plant that the couple brings into their house in the opening shot. The plant reappears on the top of the TV, where it starts to grow over the years on constantly updated TV sets, growing up together with the brothers, until it eventually dies off in the end shot. Another example is the painting that the woman gives to the man early in the film. It makes its own journey through the room, from a place by the table, briefly on the floor during the expansion of the house, to its final spot above the fireplace, where we are reminded of it even after it has been destroyed. The day before the shoot we brought in the camera system and tracks and transferred the data from our digital camera. We tested our real camera motion and let the main actors get used to acting to a fixed camera path. Because regardless of what they would do, the camera would always keep on moving at its programmed pace. It would even run into them if they got too close. And these are some moments from the shoot. There was a constant dance of change around the camera, which itself couldn't be touched. There was a lot of wardrobe, the model alone had about 14 outfits. And especially the birthday scene was intense, because in addition to the motion control system, there were also many extras in the room. The room wasn't that big and the camera system was like an elephant moving through the space. And then there were hot props, which were especially challenging, 
because they couldn't be moved in between takes. These special props would be in the overlapping area between the two shots. If we moved them, we couldn't stitch these shots together. So even when the art team had to paint the walls or change the floor, these props had to remain fixed in place. This was the first shot that we filmed. And as you can see, we placed some obvious elements, in this case a light and a flag, right in the middle of the frame. We could do this because we would film multiple versions of this shot. For instance, we decided to film the outside as a separate pass and combine the different takes in post-production. And on the right end of the shot, we hit a reflector and we removed it when we were filming the next shot. And this is that birthday scene. The crew was hiding in our fake kitchen because the room was packed with a camera system and about 25 extras. This was especially tricky because the camera had to make a big swing through the crowd. The first couple of times it bumped into people, especially into the lady carrying the cake. But after a couple of times you got the pacing right and it worked out. And funny enough, this lady was the actual owner of the house and it is awesome to have her in the shot. This visual effects breakdown reveals our process of stitching the shots together. In total there are 18 shots and 17 hidden cuts within our one taker. Each time that a white line appears in frame it marks the stitching edge of two shots. We try to hide these stitching areas in a place in frame where no one would be really looking, so always away from the action. Because we could also film multiple takes of each of the 18 shots, we could also place obvious elements in the frame, such as a gaffer, and then film another take with him out of frame and stitch the two together. Some other challenges that we faced were moving from a daylight scene straight into a night scene, and then later on back into the day scene. On this wall for instance there would be night light coming in from the right and daylight coming in from the left and the transition on the wall had to be invisible. In a couple of shots we also had to remove the tracks of the camera system because we sometimes couldn't prevent it from entering our frame. Other visual effects work included adding visuals on old TV screens and some cleanup work such as adding smoke above the fireplace or removing a camera shadow on the wall. Lastly, we added some smaller details such as a family portrait or in the last shot, a satellite on top of the roof of the neighbor's house and a flat in the background. To wrap up this making of, I combined the different stages of our process. In the upper row is our digital pre-visualization. In the upper left is the animated camera that was translated to the real camera on set. The upper right shows a fly in the wall perspective revealing how the camera moved through the scene. The lower left shows the visual effects breakdown and the white lines indicating the separate shots. And in the lower right is the final color graded film. I hope you enjoyed this making of and I'll let this one play out.